Now today we're looking at camshaft position sensors, also known as hall senders on this 2011 Audi S4. I'll go over where they both live, bank one and bank two. Now in this 2011 Audi S4, we have two camshaft position sensors. The first one is on the right hand side of the vehicle or the passenger side here in the US. Right here is the position of the camshaft and this is where the sensor is located. So again, this is bank one, right hand side of the vehicle, known also as G40 if you have a trouble code. The other one is G163, that is bank two, which is on the left hand side of the vehicle, driver's side here in the US, and right here is the sensor. So let's remove this plastic cover. So this is just held in by rubber grommets, just be gentle. Okay, so let's start with the bank one sensor. And if you're not familiar with these uh, Volkswagen and Audi harness connectors, you first have to pull up on this little gray tab. There you go. Once you pull it up, press back. Okay, press, and then you can wiggle this off. Now, if you're familiar with working on vehicles, you know the next step. And that's taking an ohms or a resistance reading on the sensor and I've shown this in the past before. Audi does things a little bit differently. All that you need to do is verify that the harness connector is getting power. If this is getting power and you have a trouble code for bank one then you need to replace the sensor. That's it. You just want to verify this is getting power. If you have a trouble code for bank two verify this is getting power which we will do together. If it is getting power replace the sensor. It's that simple. So let me show you how you can test this. Now this is a digital multimeter. If you plan on doing your own auto repair, this is a must have. Inexpensive, $25 as always. I'll have a link in the description box below. And all that you're doing is plugging in the leads that come with the meter. And then choose the volts. Make sure you're on the DC setting. Now the other thing I'll be using is a test probe kit. Not necessary, just makes the job so much easier because you don't have to use paper clips to jam into the harness connector. This will not hurt anything. So looking at the harness connector, you wanna take your test probes. Again, you can use paper clips, just be really gentle. Insert it in the left lead, the other probe in the right lead. That's it. Now I'm not starting the vehicle, I'm just turning on the ignition. So simply press in the key, and now everything is on. So what we want to see here are five volts. So just taking the leads running from the harness connector, touching the test probes, and watch the meter. And as you can see, hold on, we have, let me clamp it on. We have five volts. This verifies this harness connector is getting power. Now, if you do this test and you are getting power at the harness connector, then you'll need to replace the sensor. I'll show you how you can do that right now. If you are not getting any power here, just check the wiring at this location. But if everything looks okay, then you'll need to track down a blown fuse. It could be a blown relay. It could be a short somewhere, and you'll need something like a power probe tool to track that down. But chances are, if you do this test, you'll have power here. So let's go ahead and remove the sensor. Now there's only one fastener holding on the sensor. It is a T30 bit, but there's not a lot of room here. Your typical T30 bit is just a little bit too long, and you don't want to strip that. So let me show you something else that will certainly work. This is a ratcheting screwdriver. These are terrific, very inexpensive. Again, I'll have a link for this in the description box below, along with the T30 bit. You see how much shorter this is? This makes a very, very big difference. Now again, this vehicle being 11 years old, 181,000 miles, it really makes me nervous removing any of these fasteners because if they strip, I am so done. So wire brush, and I'm just cleaning out the end. See all the debris coming off? The end of the fastener. Okay, so ratcheting wrench. Insert it here. 
and put a lot of force on it. You don't want this to strip. I can't stress this enough. So placing a lot of stress on the fastener and with my right hand I'm turning it. Take your time and there we go. And then just twisting and pulling until the sensor comes out here. And there it is. And let's do bank two together and we'll wrap it up. If these are hard to remove, you can also use a pick. Okay, press down. There we go. Let's test the voltage. Once again, test leads, terminal all the way on the left and all the way on the right. The middle one is just left alone. Turn on the ignition. Once again, five volts in good shape. So right here we have a line. This is for the vacuum brake booster that we replaced around a month ago. Just gently pull on this and just clean out the fastener here. Now we can use our traditional T30 bit. Once again, place a lot of force on it because you don't want this to strip. There we go. Rock this back and forth. There's just an O-ring holding everything in place. And there's your sensor. So a couple of things before we wrap this up. Number one, if you are replacing the sensor, don't forget to install a brand new O-ring because I'm reusing the sensors. I'm replacing the old brittle O-rings with HNBR O-rings. They are a lot better. And thirdly, don't forget to delete the trouble codes from the vehicle's computer. It will delete on its own if you don't have a scan tool. It just takes a lot of driving before it cycles out. So just grab a scan tool, delete it, and you'll be good to go. So until next time, thank you for watching.